This is Backdoor Boink, where we welcome every side of everyone. Please note, this is an 18 plus podcast. It's time to put in some earbuds if you don't want to answer awkward questions from your children, family, or friends. I'm Kayla, a certified relationship and intimacy coach. And I'm MJ, and I brought the lube. In this podcast, we explore the behind the scenes of a weekly wellness topic. Our goal is to help you feel good, be naughty. Thank you for checking out our After Dark, After Hours podcast. You can find more information, including our YouTube channel, social media accounts, events, Discord, and products at boinked.com. That's www.boink-ed.com. Now, let's get in that back door. Are you ready to rumble? I have a feeling we're going to end up in a rumble. I I mean, with how discussions about tonight's topic have been in the past, it's very possible. So are you ready? No. (laughs) Are you ever? No. But you're excited to be here. No. (laughs) Thinking of sitting this one out, you can have a one-sided conversation. Oh, Oh, like talk to a wall? Yep. Some days that's how I feel. That's how I feel every day. Wow. What are we talking about tonight? I don't know. I have, wait for it, Hmm? no outline. (laughs) Well, with tonight's conversation, that's probably a good thing. Possibly. Got to roll with it. Got to adapt. I don't adapt well. No. Actually, you know what? Come to think of it, the key word in tonight's topic is something you don't deal well with at all. Tonight's topic is change. Nope. (laughs) <laughs> I'm revoking my consent. Red, purple, banana, ain't happening. You're on your own. Pineapple, pineapple. <laughs> you really don't do well with change of any degree, any way, shape, or form. No. And tonight... Might it have to do with my personality? I was going to say your personality. You have one of those? I don't know what else to call it. Okay. That people would understand what it is. Okay. My lack of personality? There you go. <laughs> you have a great personality. I don't do change. No. Unless I make the change, and then I always have buyer's remorse. Yes. Constantly. Constantly. Which is pretty amazing that we've made it this far, because we're talking about change in relationships. Oh, you don't think I haven't had buyer's remorse? Wow! You are on a roll tonight. Just tossing me under the left wheels, and then the right wheels, and then the rear wheels. You're just reversing that fucking bus right over me. Drive, reverse. Drive, reverse. I don't know about you, but when I used to take the bus, they were manual transmissions. Great, so you're having to put in even more effort to run back and forth over me. Anyway. It's just one extra pedal. I really am starting to feel we're already three minutes into this recording, and I really feel that you're trying to derail this already. I would do no such thing. Uh This tea is delightful. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're going to look at this in a couple of different ways. Okay. We're going to look at how intimacy changes. We're going to look at how family or household dynamics changes. We're going to look at how communication might change. Okay. And the dead stare you're giving me. Yep. Okay, so before we jump in, would you say that our relationship has changed over time? For better or worse? That was not the question. (laughs) Yes, it has. That was like pulling teeth to get you to say. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, let's look back on past relationships. Would Mm -hmm. you say that they changed with time? Oh, yeah. Okay. Again, I go back to for better or worse. (laughs) I mean, that's up to... The people involved, I guess. Agreed. Agreed. So which perspective do you want to tackle first? I have options. Yeah. Communication, intimacy, household slash relationship dynamics. I mean, they're all different areas to cover, Mm -hmm. but they're all the same. Mm, One leads to another. So they're all intertwined in one way or another. That is a really good point. They're all interconnected. One is definitely going to affect the other in this cycle. So I guess, where do we want to start? Do we want to start with, I'd like to say the easy one, but I don't know what one that is. The easy one is probably going to be the communication 
or oh. the household? Well, okay. Let's start with, get a coin. Let's start with the household. Let's start with the household. Sure. Okay. So when I say changes in the household, what's the first thing you think? You're wanting me to paint. You're wanting me to redo <laughs> the bathroom. <laughs> oh, is that not what you're talking about? The household, not the house structure. Oh, okay. Yeah, the household. Something as simple as a daily routine. Mm, okay. I put the dishes away. Now you're doing it. Ooh. Now, you know that triggers me because it's my kitchen. When the kid does it, I just kind of, I'm happy. You just nod? I just nod and smile. smile. And I hunt for what I need to hunt for later. Okay. But yeah, something as simple as a daily routine or work schedules. Not everybody has a nine to five. Right. I mean, my schedule is varying depending on the week. Every quarter we bid, I could get bumped to a different shift. We never know. These are all valid points. And I would say even something as small as the chore allotment changing mm -hmm. can cause a lot of rockiness in a relationship. Who am I? You are the domesticated diva. Okay. If all of a sudden you stopped preparing the coffee in the morning or putting away the clean dishes or taking out the trash, I would have a what the fuck moment. I mean, I can totally start doing that. You mean stop doing it? Or I can start stopping. You can st <laughs> Why? Just to see how it affects us? I, yeah, for science. For si mm, I know I'm usually on board for science, but let's not. Okay, then you're cooking dinner tomorrow night. Fuck that. I will take out the garbage. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to be living off of uh, Rat Max and, and... Ramen. Ramen. Yeah. So this is a great example of what is going to ultimately be the point of the relationship. Things change. The saying goes, change is inevitable except from a vending machine. Although most of those take credit cards now. So there's that. So how do you handle it? I spiral. You spiral when the It doesn't matter what it changes? is. Okay. You know that. They may not know that. They know that now. Well, we did establish that you do not handle no, change well. I don't. Okay. So here's how I, on this side of things, attempt to handle changes in our households. Duck, dodge, and avoid. Pretty much. No. <laughs> like I do a confrontation. Yes. Mm. Until you... Don't. Until you don't. You do until you don't. You're, you're that um, stereotypical shake the soda bottle, throw a couple Mentos in. Put the cap on and walk away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, what I was going to say, and, and for us, this has been a couple of different changes that we've seen over the years. So from household obligations... Mm-hmm to child rearing obligations, yeah. to work schedules, to finances. And when it comes to finances, I'm talking about who's bringing in the majority of the money and who's taking care of the bills and the checkbooks. Oh, that's you. <laughs> I won't touch that checkbook. Fair. Absolutely. And for the longest time, I mean, you're a divorcee. I mean, okay, let, let's... Put it to you that put it put it out there this way. We were making equal. Mm -hmm. However, being divorced, a good portion of mine was going elsewhere. Yep. So when it came to cash on hand, you were the breadwinner. Yep. That's yeah. where you were going with this. Yes. And for the first couple years, mm -hmm. you were child rearing the daytime shift. Oh, our little one. Yeah. Yeah. What did you think? No, I wasn't just, sure what you were talking about. We were just about. taking him in off the street. It's I mean, fine. Whatever. Yeah, for the first couple of years of, of... We won. For the first couple of years of our child together, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was working the day shift. You'd have that time. And then I would take over for the nighttime routines and you would go to work. Yep. When I approach you about change, I am very, very careful about it. In other words, you've thought about it for three or four days at least. Uh-huh. And what I would suggest when there are even these small changes in the structure of obligations in the household or big changes like the finances or work schedules, rip that fucking band-aid off. I am sorry, but how, how many times have I had to come to you and say, I've thought about it, I've thought about it, I've thought about it. What we're doing is not working. We have to make a change. Here's what I suggest and why. Household finances, yeah. 
household finances, your schedule, yep. who's maintaining the books, you name it. And that's generally how those changes have to be addressed because they're very matter of fact things. They are things that, that need to get done in order to... Somebody in the household needs to do them. Yes. Whether it's me or you. Yep. I'll take the trash out. I'll pick up the backyard all day long. I don't want to touch the books. <laughs> Just take my paycheck and do what you need to do with it. Okay. So we found something that you just nope, nope, nope. And there are things that I nope, nope, nope. And then there's stuff in the middle where we compromise. We both go nope. <laughs> the important thing here is that we are not taking things on to the point of resentment. There was a period of time where I've been doing the books for, for our household for 13 since years. Since day one. Since day one. And there was a period of time where I was so stressed out. My mental health was in such a state that I had to say, I need your help with this. I yep. need you to take over this. And there was. There was a couple months in there that you were keeping an eye on the e-checkbook or whatever it was. And I would scratch my head every time I opened it going, how in the hell does this work? To be clear, I ended up taking it back because you weren't doing it right. <laughs> but... The point of it was, is I could have kept my mouth shut. Mm -hmm. I could have sat there and stewed. What would that have done for our relationship if we just... Just driven a wedge in it. Driven a wedge. That stress. Hey, I did the best I could. You did. And what you were able to do, even if it's not the way I would have done it, what you were able to do was helpful. I tried. Making sure that you are just face-to-face -face communicating your needs in the household. And when things need to change, that you address those. We agree? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don't beat around the bush on certain things. Not when it comes... It's not worth it. Not when it comes to these matter-of-fact things. You don't have to insert, like, feels or accusations when you have these conversations either. And you don't need that proverbial shit sandwich either. Really, no. Because this is a matter of the equilibrium of, of the house and to benefit you both. I mean, they, they say a relationship is 50-50. If it's a two-party relationship, it's 50-50. We all know that it's 60-40 some days, 80-20 other days. Yeah. And it fluctuates. Absolutely, because we're not... Well, I like to tell people, we can't... We only have so many spoons. We only have so many spoons. And some days we wake up and some are still left dirty in the dishwasher. Yes. What I like to tell people is that we can't be our all, all the time. No, I guess we can't. Mm -hmm. We can try. We can try. But we we're going to get burnout. Exactly. So with that in mind... Let's talk about how communication changes over the course of a relationship. Okay. Well, when I met you, I had an NB3. Oh my gosh. And now I have a S21. You are going to take every one of these perspectives to the literal nth degree. Oh, my head, my brain hurts. Oh, my brain hurts. Okay. No. The way that we speak speak to one another and exchange information. How has that changed? What was it like when we first started? You want me to remember that far back? Oh, I'm sorry. You're old. Are the memories going? They're starting to. Looking I still remember more than you, though. Hush. Communication, how so? All right. So here's my perception of not just our relationship to start, but a lot of relationships to start, especially for younger generations, and especially, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to those listening that fall into this category, but especially for cis heterosexual relationships. This can be a long lasting effect of, well, my partner should just know. Oh, <laughs> the assumption. <laughs> I recall those days. Yes, you should just know I should just know that Kayla's in a bad mood and avoid her. I should just know that Kayla wants this. I should just know that Kayla needs that. No, I don't have a crystal ball that works that well. No. Mine's old. It's staticky sometimes. And sometimes I get the blue screen of death. I have to shake it up. <laughs> the snow on the crystal ball is the static of the screen, not like, not yeah. like a snow globe. Gotcha. But seriously, we, as human beings... And I think it has something to do with the new relationship energy, that NRE. We're on this high of feeling so connected with a new person, so excited to be around them and building up our expectations of them that we start kind of painting this scene of how we think they should act or react to 
certain situations. We put them on a pedestal? Yeah. Yeah. And when they... Crash, they crash hard. When they fall short, it just, it's a really, it's a really far drop. Yeah. And all because we didn't communicate. We had... What happens when you assume? You make an ass out of you and me? Yep. Yeah. You're, you're assuming they know what you want. Yeah. When, who knows if you even know what you want. How many of, of early relationship arguments could be avoided? By buying two fries at McDonald's instead of the one? <laughs> No. How many arguments in early relationships could be avoided by one in those in those relationships saying, you know what, that fry you just ordered sounds really good. I'd like one too. Instead of expecting you to share your fries. That's what it is. I, I expect you to read my mind that I'm going to smell the french fries and they're going to be great and you're just going to give up some of your food. And if you don't, you're an inconsiderate asshole. Okay. These fries are great. (laughs) It is okay to tell a partner point blank what you need. I'll go along with that. Oh, you hesitated. What's wrong with that? What? It's all about the approach, especially in a new relationship. Okay. Just like everything, you get more flies with sugar than without or, you know, bees with honey. You catch more flies with honey. Something like that. (laughs) Yes, there's certainly ways to approach this. But instead of dancing on this line where... Oh, come on, I still do that. Yeah. (laughs) Because I'm the one that's supposed to have a crystal ball here. But anyway... Ooh. Yeah, I am blunt as a damn spoon lately. Lately, yes. But instead of this whole, I'm going to keep quiet, I'm going to keep tallies, I'm going to kind of rate your performance early on in a relationship, that open communication is going to build an even greater foundation and ideally a hell of a lot more happiness as opposed to hassle. Ideally. I think we could have avoided a lot of arguments early on. Yeah, we did have a little rough patch for a while. But for the most part, we have both just said what we wanted or what's been bugging us. Yes. That took years, though. It did. I still dance, but I do it for me. I want to make sure I'm mad at the right thing or upset about the right thing and not just upset because I'm upset. That day, you rolled out of bed on the wrong side. Because that, you know, that's me. Yes. So there's there's twofold in this, in that it's okay to say, I'm upset and I don't know why. Because we're human beings with mm-hmm. feelings and hormones and imbalances and God knows mental health. And it is okay to say, what did you mean by X, Y, Z? I think those two tools usually develop over time, but I'm going to suggest you start the mental exercises to include those early on. Yes. I mean, what was it? Just the other week, I was mad for three days. I knew I was mad. You knew I was upset. Mm -hmm. And after we sat down and talked about it, and I said, hey, I don't know if I'm upset because of X, Y, or Z. I'm just upset about it. We were able to talk through it, figure out what it was that was upsetting me. And we got through it. Yeah. But that first day, you're like, what's wrong? And I don't know. I don't know yet. I need to sit on it. And that's an okay answer. And you just check in with me for the next couple days. You okay? You ready to talk? When you're ready, I'm here. Exactly. Give you time to to process. But instead of ignoring it and letting your bad mood give me a bad mood, and now we're arguing about the color of the sky and we're having this big, we're addressing it. Yeah. So. Simple communication. I agree. So that's how communication can change over time in a relationship. And hopefully that is the case for for other relationships moving forward. If it's not, I strongly encourage you to speak with a relationship coach or just practice a couple of these little tips. What did you mean by X, Y, Z? Hey, are you okay? Something seems off. Hey, this practice that we have going on in our household is not working. What should we do? All of these are really great communication tools. I'll cook dinner. You take out the trash. I'm fine with that. Okay. All right. Anything else on household dynamic changes or communication changes before we move on to the difficult one? Use your words. Use your words. That's great. Mm -hmm. It's a great bit of advice. Pull up your big person pants and use your words. Now we can see how the household dynamics 
and the communication, mm -hmm. how these changes are going to affect your intimacy, your relationship with one another. See episode blah, timestamp blah, blah about how stress and lack of communication and understanding impacts your intimacy. That's that cycle we were talking about. But let's take a look at how intimacy changes in a relationship. Now, this is where I imagine that we look like rock'em sock'em robots. Okay. You gloved up? Mm-hmm. You ready? Mm-hmm. Are you ready? I'm ready. Because we know who's going to lose this one. What? I never lose. You lose. I'm a wiener. No, 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 no. I'm not a wiener. Well, you're a wiener, but... <laughs> Intimacy changes. What's the first thing that comes to mind for you as we dip into this topic? Other than, you know, trying to stare laser beam eyes through my body mass. Because that's what I'm getting here. Why do you always put me on the spot? Because you don't ever ask me questions. Ask me a question. No, I don't want to anymore. Then answer my question. I forgot what it was. What's the first thing that comes to mind as we're talking about intimacy changing over the course of a relationship? Well, go back to that NRE. You can't get enough of each other. As you get on in your relationship, you're okay with less and less time. You go and hang out with your friends a little more. The, the newness wears off. Yeah, your brain stops producing all those crazy, fun chemicals mm -hmm. that come with new experiences. Absolutely. I mean, what are you looking for for answers? The bedroom stuff dies down a little bit. There's a couple different ways I'm actually approaching this particular change in a relationship. Mm -hmm. But I think the one that you're bringing up now is going to be more commonplace for people. Yeah. So this is the idea that, you know, first couple months, you know, three, maybe even six months, you are all over each other, hot and heavy and just mm, can't get enough. Yep. Mutt and Jeff, side by side, everywhere you go. Everywhere you go. You're thinking about the other person. You want to be with the other person. You want to be on the other person. On, under, around. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah, that intimacy is going to change. That need for physical is going to change. And a lot of times I get clients that come to me and are like, well, what the fuck? It just stopped one day. It just stopped one day. And I want to reassure people that that's entirely fucking normal. Is it? It is. Okay. Our sexual desires are not static. Speak for yourself. Uh, you can try and toot that horn all you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You ain't fooling nobody. Your sexual desire, as much as mine, as much as anybody else's out there, is going to change. It goes up and it goes down. Not only that, it's, well, that this is going to put us onto the other part that I wanted to bring up. The flavors are going to change, like taste buds. Whatever. We'll cross that bridge later. We'll cross that bridge later. It's a roller coaster. Yeah. I mean, at, at one point in your relationship, you're both riding the same roller coaster mm -hmm. at the same time. And due to life... Whether it's job, stress, bills, family obligations, you may both shift tracks and one's at a peak and one's in a low and it happens. It happens. The important thing is when it happens, <gasps> communicating uh, about it. Oh, we're, we're back to we're, Yeah, part back to one. another thing. But communicating about it and making sure that you're not letting it just become habitual. It's not because that's when it becomes the air quotes here, the rut that everyone worries about. Okay. It's okay to fall into that rut. Mm -hmm. It's okay to ride in that rut for a little bit. Mm -hmm. But you have to realize that you are in a rut and work to get out of it. Exactly. Which we did a, we did a separate episode on. So it's totally normal. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Here is, I can see you looking at me with utter trepidation. That's a good word. It's a big word for you. It's not a big word for me. Onomatopoeia. That's mm -hmm. a big word. Anyway, let's talk about what, when you do have the drive, when the roller coasters are working at the same altitudes, same elevations, they're chugging right along. Mm -hmm. What about when the flavor changes? You're going to have to be more specific. All right. This could be anything from partners that experience or partners that have a vanilla type intimacy practice. Now one or both of them is interested in spicing things up okay so we're going or it, so is this a vanilla ice cream cone or is this now a twist or is this i'm gonna take a page out of my own book and say what do you mean by that <laughs> <laughs> what's so a twist is, is 
one's chocolate, one's vanilla. Yep. Yep. I mean, is it is one still vanilla and one wanting to spice things up? Where are we going here? Let's go with that. That's really common. Okay. What does that mean for the relationship? Someone's got a little work to do. Ooh, someone? Well, yeah. I mean, all parties do, but one person in particular, the one who is changing flavors, really needs to sit down with themselves, think about it, and how do they want to approach it? That took a turn that I was not expecting. I was expecting you to say that the vanilla partner needed to put in work towards meeting the chocolate partner. I love that. No. The work comes a lot from the party that is looking to make these changes. I mean, that's only fair. Absolutely. Have your research, know your partner, know the best way to approach these things. Now, I'm trying to figure out how to delve into this topic because the way it came up for us when we had similar conversations unrecorded in just our personal life, I have no idea how the fuck it came up. What inspired this podcast was this concept of when we started seeing each other, when we got married, there were certain promises or certain expectations or certain understandings that were made that we had for one another. So there are some instances where relationships look to get spicier. Mm -hmm. Okay, We have the vanilla, the chocolate. Hopefully they're communicating, finding ways to satisfy that within their relationship dynamic whether that's two partners or multiple partners. What about changes to a relationship's original understanding, original expectations, original promises to each other, whether that is monogamous or poly? What about them? I mean, you've had discussions and you've made promises. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, we've established that people's intimacy, their flavor, their taste buds change. Right. And for some people, that's going to look different. It's going to look, you know, hey, I want you to flip me over and we're going to do it doggy style. Hey, I want to explore intimacy with other partners. Or for people that are in a polycule, hey, I would like to look into having a monogamous relationship with just you. All these different changes that step away from the initial expectations and initial promises that are made at the beginning or the middle of a relationship. What is what does that mean for the relationship? It can go multiple ways. Nope, you made your promises, stick with them or get out. Okay. Or the other person could be willing to explore with you or meet you somewhere in the middle. There you go. There's multiple ways and it's ultimately it's your relationship. I guess how fluid do you want it to be? I think therein lies the key. How flexible are all parties involved willing to be? More than that, the piece that you said, this is your relationship. Mm -hmm. For example, this is yours and my relationship. Okay. What we choose to do with that, how we choose to move forward with that, that's that's up to us. It's nobody else's business. It's nobody else's business. So whatever agreements that we have with one another, Mm Mm-hmm. Whatever promises we make to one another, as long as we are communicating them and agreeing to changes, then that's fine. It's it's a okay. contract. So we agreed X and later down the road, you wanted to change something. I wanted to change something. So we agreed on Y. Yeah. That oh. doesn't mean I get to jump to Z. No, because jumping to Z without talking to me is just basically breaking a contract or cheating or whatever, however you want to look at it non-ethical something or other yep but yeah it's between me and you and whoever and or whatever we decide to involve in it agreed whether it's me and you and the leather guy who gives us (laughs) these nice paddles or me you and somebody else or just me and you wanting to spice things up or slow things down or yeah There's something to be said about those um, that live a kinky or BDSM lifestyle. Sometimes one of them wants to pull back the reins. Yeah, they need to pump the brakes once in a while, too. Yeah. For them, vanilla is spice. It's something different. It's a new flavor. Vanilla spice. Pumpkin spice. Maybe we should call it pumpkin. No. (laughs) But the thing is, is that I think a lot of times we culturally or through upbringing or we get hung up on these ideas of, again, putting that person on a pedestal, holding on to what the experiences were 
and the promises that were made in NRE situations and not growing together as individuals. Well, you can grow apart and Sadly. still be happy together. Yeah, that's absolutely y- true. You can you can grow apart and still be happy together. It may take a little more work in the beginning or you can grow more together and be miserable. <laughs> There, there's that too. So you just, it's finding that balance. You know, let you go do your thing once in a while. Let me go do my thing and work on it as a team. Yeah. Whether it's two of you, four of you, more of you, got to work through it. Relationships are going to change because people change. Well, your taste buds change every seven years. Exactly, which is why I'm always comparing intimacy I, and desire to taste buds. We are not the same as we were five years ago. Oh, fuck no. We wouldn't. Hmm. One of us would be missing. They would not have found the body. But anyway, (laughs) so when we were having this discussion, it came up. I have a way of, again, being very, very blunt. Yes. Being in a relationship with a person does not mean you own that person. No. Does not mean you control that person. Except, you know. (laughs) And agreed upon dynamics. Exactly. Exactly. You cannot stop that person from growing. You cannot stop that person from changing. No. All you can do is communicate and try and find ways that you can grow and change together. For some people, that's going to mean, hey, we got married and we have these vows that we will never touch or covet another human being. That's not going to work for everybody. No, it's not. And that's okay. Is it? If that is what they look at each other and their contract to one another and say, it's time for an amendment. Okay. It's time to add something into our constitutional union. So they sit down and hash it out. And hash it out. It may not be 100% of what one wants or the other wants. They may meet in the middle somewhere. It may be a temporary amendment. Yep. Baby steps. Baby steps. Hey, I hear you. These are my reservations. I'm willing to try maybe step one and two. I'm not ready to go fully to step three, and I may never be. And if at any point these steps aren't going to work for us, we need to reevaluate. You have lots of gears turning. What's going on up there? I just have lots of gears turning. Kind of stuck in the mud. (laughs) Gotta throw that bitch in four-wheel drive. Mm. You are a person that is not comfortable with change. I am not. Even talking about it. And it's not even for me. Even talking about it. You look extremely uncomfortable right now. I'm anxious. Change makes me anxious. Just talking about it makes me anxious. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. It was not my intention to make you anxious, so I'm not even enjoying watching you squirm this time. I gotta put on my big girl hat. Yeah, put on your big person hat. Put on my big person hat and my big person shoes and... Come on, my supervisor gave me a year's notice when he was gonna retire. Because you're that... He he knew how bad I was with change. Yes. So, over the years... As our intimacy has changed, because it does. Mm -hmm. My taste buds change, yours change. It has required a lot of communication. Oh, yeah. Good, bad, and otherwise. Good, bad, and otherwise. And even when we have come to agreements, I can see these moments where you kind of relapse into, but wait, this isn't what we initially agreed upon. Mm -hmm. What What is that about, if you don't mind my asking? Buyer's remorse. Does buyer's remorse ever leave? Yes. Okay. How? When things go back to the way they're supposed to be. No. <laughs> really? Yeah. Or until it feels normal, till it feels natural. Okay. There is this uh, theory, this concept that it takes up to seven times, if not more, of a certain practice before it feels normal. Hello, you're talking to me. Okay, so maybe like 50 times. There you go. <laughs> Before it feels natural and normal and it takes away from the stigma of it and the the taboo. Okay, but doesn't have to be taboo. No. I mean, just, just because it's changed doesn't mean it's taboo. It's just not, it's not my daily routine. <laughs> and we go back to that. Change is uncomfortable, but it doesn't have to mean that it's bad. Embracing change and working together through change can make all the difference in strengthening a relationship. It can. To be clear, I'm not saying that... Or or we could kill each other. I mean, there's entirely that possibility. But to be clear, I'm not saying that if your partner wants to change, you just 
go all in and just do whatever they say. That's no. not at all the case. No. Talking about working together. Yeah. And Tell them together. they got to put it on hold while you do your homework. Mm -hmm. Because honestly, if your partner's bringing something to you, chances are it's a little bias. And it's not intentional bias. No, we're human beings. There's there's always bias. They are looking for the positives. Yeah. And it's okay to come forth with reservations. I sure as fuck don't think everything through when I come to you with an idea. No. No, you don't. <laughs> and then um, when I say no. The Jeep, mm -hmm. the RV, the motorcycle, um, some excursions, some extracurricular activities. Like, there's a lot of things that I don't think through before I'm like, hey, this is an amazing idea. Let's do this. Okay, so touch on some of those. Go ahead. Go ahead. Which ones? Whatever. Intimacy wise, the the well, Jeep. We, we bought a Jeep for six grand. We ended up spending probably twelve on it total altogether after having it rebuilt a couple times. Um, the motorhome we bought, I think we had a squatter in it for a little while. Um, so we got rid of that. Uh, what are these extracurriculars that you didn't think through? The business. Well, yeah, that that's a good that's a good one. <laughs> Yeah, I have these these grand ideas, and you're always good about coming to me with the reservations about them. And so we try and find ways to mitigate those and move forward in a way that we are both mostly comfortable with. We're mostly comfortable. Mostly comfortable. Neither of us are always 100% sure. I mean, sometimes we are. No. But we are 80 to 90% mostly comfortable, and there's always that, yeah, this isn't a good idea, let's not do it. I think that is a really good point. As you're looking to grow and change with your partner, make sure that you've discussed the ejector seat. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you've discussed that ripcord on the parachute. If this is not working for one or both of us... Somebody how, has veto power. Some There has to be a way to pull back. Even if it is just temporarily. Yep. Hey, the RV is not going to work out. We're going to have to sell it. Maybe we'll take a bit of a loss on it, but this is not going to work for us. We need to stop this and move forward in another direction. Mm -hmm. Same thing for relationship. Yeah. Intimacy. Mm -hmm. That RV Jeep business thing is like, this is a great analogy. I'm fucking loving this. Okay. All right. Go ahead. I don't have anything. I was going to say, I think that about sums up this concept of relationships changing. Okay. Yeah. Do you feel a little bit better? No. <laughs> we talked about change. You are shoulders hunched. You are fidgeting. Mm -hmm. You you poor, poor thing you. And I'm going to have to sit through this again while I edit it. Ouch. I can edit it if you want. No, I'll do it. <laughs> Good thing you're a masochist too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you did really well. I tried. And I want to let you know that as we move forward, whether it's communication, whether it's household dynamics, whether it's our intimacy, I love you and I am always happy to work with you and make sure that we have a ripcord, a parachute, hell, even a bungee, because sometimes we're like, wee! Nope. Hey, wee! We, we've tried nope. things. <laughs> we've tried things. Yeah. We had fun with things and, and then we didn't. And we've, that's we, we've okay. pulled that ripcord. That's okay. I don't blame you. I hope that you don't blame me for the things that we've tried and didn't didn't work for us. Learning experiences. Learning experiences. For science. We talked about them. We went into them together. And holy shit, did we hit that eject button. <laughs> Rhode Island is an interesting place. Anyway. Yeah, that's where I went. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay for people to change and grow. Mm -hmm. Try and grow together. Try and communicate. I'm done. That's, that's all I got. I hope it helps somebody. Do you have some humor to bring into this? No. I mean a naughty limerick. No. What? No. That's all it's anybody funny. puts up with it's, this for. It's, it's not funny. Oh, gosh. Change is inevitable, except from a vending machine. Oh, hey, there you go. We can go with that. I already said that. Oh. At times, I am so mad I am hopping. My angriness sets my veins popping. I yell and I curse with swear words diverse, but my wife does much worse. She goes shopping. Oh, my gosh. You're right. That's not funny. That is such a stereotypical. I'm going to walk away from the mic now. You can do the you can do the good nights. <laughs>
Hey, there is nothing wrong with a little retail therapy. I do that more than you do. You do it way more than I do. Even if I don't purchase. You just browse. Oh, yeah. I could browse for hours. And then we get random packages from Wish and just all sorts of overseas crap. Uh Uh-huh. I mean, at least you're budget aware when you do retail therapy. Yes. So I kudos to you for that. And... If it fails, well, I knew what I was buying. Garbage. I was about to compare your your trying to buy with a relationship, and then you were like, garbage. So I'm just going to let that go. Well, thank you for that um, stereotype of a chuckle. You're welcome. I love that it paints you as the wife here. Now say goodnight <laughs> to everybody, wifey. Good night. Thank you, as always, for listening. I still don't know why you put up with us. But I don't know why either. <laughs> But we're happy to have you. We'll be here next week. Whether it's a topic on kink, whether it's a topic on communication, whether it's LGBTQ or something just for you. Look at that. I'm a poet. All right. That's it. We'll see you next week. In the meantime, stay you, stay beautiful, feel good, be naughty. Good night. Tonight's topic is change. Nope. (laughs) <laughs> I'm revoking my consent. Red, purple, banana, ain't happening. You're on your own. Pineapple, pineapple. <laughs> Thanks again for listening to this podcast. I started Boink in 2022 with the goal to create a safe environment and culture for all genders and sexual orientations to learn about and embrace every part of themselves and one another. We offer workshops, events, and various inclusive products, along with consultations to make sure we take a holistic approach to enhancing individuals' sexual satisfaction with themselves or their partners. I believe that when you accept yourself and your partner on the most intimate of levels, it filters out into your daily life. The World Health Organization recognizes this, saying sexual health is fundamental to the overall health and well-being of individuals, couples, and families and to the social and economic development of communities and countries. So as long as you'll have us, Boink will be here. Kink-affirming, gender-blurring, sex-fulfilling. And you can find any of our details at www.boink-ed.com.